Welcome to the Billy Ho Forecast Show. Please subscribe and like the video. Remember, the more you share, the bigger we grow. Now, let's go! Hello, Billy Ho here. Today we're going to preview this year's U.S. Open. In today's show, we're going to take a look at the golf course, touch on some skills needed to do well, and we'll talk about a couple of players that uh, look pretty good at the jump off. So first and foremost, the U.S. Open is a USGA sanctioned event so the cut is top 60 and ties. Now, the golf course is called the Country Club, and it is Brookline, Massachusetts, just a little southwest of uh, Boston. And it is one of the oldest country clubs in the United States. Uh, before I get started on the breakdown, look in the description of this video because I put a flyover, a YouTube video flyover, hole by hole description from Golf Digest, courtesy of them. Very, very helpful. Now, the course is a par 70 track. It will play at 7,250 yards, give or take on which day they have the tees. Uh, the fairway grass is a bent and pole mix. The greens are POA. They are going to be firm and fast because it is the U.S. Open. The three-inch rough is a mix of bluegrass, ryegrass, and POA grass, so it's kind of a little bit of everything. And you know rough is going to be heavy in a U.S. Open, so you're going to need to be mindful of that. And the greens themselves are very small, just like they are this week, just like they have been here recently. 4,300 uh, square feet on average. Now, there are some interesting holes that I've come to uh, look at doing the flyover thing. And uh, the only flat hole is number one. It's like this uh, racetrack hole that is just dead flat and it's laid out the same way an old racetrack used to be. There's not a ton of water but there is a bunch of curvy and undulating fairways. The, the greens are small, and most all of them are guarded by bunkers. So you're going to have to have your sand game on. Uh, the par four ninth hole is a very dangerous driving hole and uh, will filter balls down toward a pond. So uh, you're going to see some balls in the water there, most likely. There are only four holes with water in play. But that one is one of them that I think is going to uh, collect some balls. The fifth hole is interesting because it is a very short, about 300-yard par four, all uphill driving. And uh, so you're, the golfers are going to have a choice to either lay up or try to hit it as far up the hill as they can because the green's almost impossible to hit with a driver. But you could run it up into one of the front bunkers and have a pretty easy pitch shot. So I think a lot of golfers are going to try that route. The eighth hole is a doable par five, I believe, uh, that a good aggressive tee shot will give you a chance to reach the green. Uh, the uphill approach is the tricky part, though, as it has a huge false front, and anything short of the green is going to roll 30 to 40 yards back down the hill. Just vintage U.S. Open. Uh, now, the next hole that, that I found interesting was hole 14. It's an absolutely awesome par five, and it's divided into two sections. It's kind of tiered. It has a, uh, it has a flat lower region and then an upper fairway plateau, and it leads into a tiny green. So it, it's, this, whole, this course is very interesting. And the one thing I did want to note was, like last year's U.S. Open was played at Torrey Pines. These golfers see Torrey Pines every year. U.S. Open a few years back was played at Pebble Beach. The players see Pebble Beach every year. 
this year, this course, these guys have not seen this course. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm sure they've been, you know, up there to play it once or twice before, but nothing like they're going to see this week. So skill sets. Let's take a look at some skill sets. All right. Uh, the skill sets I kind of went from was uh, off of this model, and it, it was actually a model I created oh, uh, earlier this year, I think. It was, it was just basically par 70s, under 7,200 yards, and, uh, and I've added some stuff to it, and the, you can see the list there. Good drives, so hitting fairways. Greens gained, always birdie or better in DK points. Strokes gained approach, obviously. T to green, most definitely. And since it's a par 70, you're going to have to be numero uno in par four. And uh, most of these par fours are 450 to 500 and a little over 500. So they're extremely long. And uh, so I've got long irons in there. I've got, uh, of course, these are par three, 175 to 200, 150 to 175. But that's basically like hitting an approach shot. So, uh, so just take that the way it is. So basically, longer irons are going to be important, 150 to 200 yards. So guys who hit the six, seven, and eight irons, and, uh, and those are a lot of the short knockers, you know, your webs and, and your CT pans, these guys that are used to hitting short drives and used to hitting longer irons into said greens and not flip wedges. Around the green of sand saves, I said, greens gain because the greens are small. I have a comp course model that, I, that I'm going to do, and uh, you'll see it on the ticker, the courses that I chose. They're all courses with under 5,000 square feet on average greens, like Pebble Beach uh, and a few others. You'll see the list. So if, we, if we're getting into players and we're looking at this 10K group and up, I mean, I starred some guys because I wanted to kind of mention them, but I, I would probably start John Rahm because this is his type of course. He hits the driver well, and he's one of the most accurate off the tee. So I like him starting off, and he is also – and his, his performance at Memorial was encouraging as his short game looked back in order. Uh, and he's moving to his favorite surface, which is POA. Another one I might mention is Scotty Scheffler, who ranks number one in this model. He plays par 70s and tough courses. His around the green game is impeccable. Uh, this week, he didn't have his best stuff, but, you know, who, who does? Now, if you think he's starting a downward trend because – he had a bad week this week, then by all means, you know, 11,300, I wouldn't uh, shame you for fading that. And I, and I may uh, limit my exposure as well. Uh, but JT, obviously getting his game back in order and JT prefers POA. He, he, put, and, uh, he hits the long, you know, he hits the irons and he's, uh, he's getting the putter going again and he's great around the green. The man's magical. So he's going to be super popular, obviously. Uh, Rory uh, is going to be hard to ignore because he's absolutely destroying the driver. That's his weapon. And if he can hit straight drives and knock off 50 yards on, on the, the competition this week, he's going to be hard to beat because he'll be hitting flip wedges while other people are hitting six irons. And you can see that by this week at the Canadian Open. He's using the fade off the tee to cut trees and clearing 330 bunkers. So uh, the one guy I did want to mention also up here is Morikawa. I've been backing him for several weeks now, and I said last fall that I was going to just lock button him every week, but he's just not allowing me to do so. He, his form is off. His around the green game sucks. He can't make a putt. He's lost confidence. I don't know that I could back the man this week. Uh, I reserve the right to change my mind on that. But uh, if he's not ball striking plus 10 strokes, he's in trouble. Xander, solid across the board. 
dude is just getting it done, everything but winning. And I, I don't count the Zurich thing because that's a partnership, but it was a win. So, you know, props to that. But strokes gained approach, sand saves, you know, he hits the long irons and you can't tell between uh, par three scoring. So I'm going to have to fix that. But the dude's just solid. Speeth, another one. If you if you think he's still got the driver off the tee, he seems to have found the putter a little bit, and he's really, really good on POA as well. He was plus five putting at Memorial. So, you know, I think he he might he may have found it. Uh DJ, no clue on what to do with DJ. And I'm just mentioning a few interesting guys up top. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I'll wait to the for the Tuesday show for that. These are just some up top guys. First look, Willie Z, 12th in the model, clutch. You know, Patrick Cantlay not popping here, but, you know, he can play. Shane Lowry is going to be popping in all the models. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend. So uh, that's going to do it for this preview show. I wanted to get a little bit more extensive because it's U.S. Open week. I wanted to get a little more extensive course background. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. I finally cracked that 100 subscriber mark. I want 200 by the end of the summer. So let's get it done. Uh, give a like. Don't forget the Billy Ho contest. Tuesday show coming up. Till then, peace.